Wind and swirling rain may have come to Tokyo, but like these thick-skinned wrestlers, we let nothing dampen our middle Sunday. With more armchair fans at home, the fight card gets some added sheen, with fierce rivals, crowd pleasers, and clashing styles often paired. Unofficial top billing today went to four men who between them fought about central to the Division 2 race, and another which may decide Division 1. Let's watch them in order. After four years of waiting, here is the fans' reward. The first pro sumo contest between technical wizard Uda and flying lightweight Enho. I emphasize pro because they did fight once at university level, but no one will say who won. Uda entered this bout with five wins from seven, built on a trademark low stance and clever footwork. A sharper Enho, meanwhile, came in with six wins and a share of the lead with Chiyomaru, owing to renewed success in finding angles to work with. Last week, he praised Uda as his inspiration, saying, His top division feats were what drew me to pro sumo in the first place. But please don't compare us, as I'm no technical wizard. The respect Uda revealed today is mutual. When you see someone that small standing in front of you, it's a different kind of scary, he said of their pre-match rituals. He radiates a certain something, and I try to project a similar aura. No need to try, Enho maintained. I more than felt his unique aura. My legs were trembling, you know. The applause the two received merely for showing was louder than anything else heard this march, even by Hakuho sending tension and adrenaline upwards in tandem. Who would make a better ally of the pressure? It was time for us to breathe in and find out. Uda went down heavily on that left leg, but that's not the only reason he hesitates. He thinks he's won and is ready to remount, but Coach Takenawa tells him to wait while the judges convene. I set up to go in lower than him and was happy with my tachi ai, subsequent flow and manner of attack, Enho said, and you can see what he means. He's crouching low, hitting straight and hoping for the pull and Uda actually obliges with a move he won't enjoy re-watching. His feet slip horribly, but by sheer luck, Enho is so focused on staying low that he can't slap down from above. And then I'm like, oh shit, Enho adds, because I only go and slap him forward and then pull myself. And that's when I knew I'd lost. I was well beaten. And Uda, half returning to the dojo of course, was equally sure of the result, saying, I watched him pretty carefully at the edge and didn't think I had cause for concern. The judges thought it prudent to check, in the faint hope of squeezing out a rematch for which the fans would have shouted were there not a pandemic. But, as both fighters assumed, Enho touched down first and the referee's call was upheld. It's a good job it was settled then, Uda wheezed because mentally I had nothing left for a rematch. I lost but had a great time, Enho summed up. Honestly, I didn't expect to compete as well as I did, and my takeaway is that some of my moves actually worked on him. It would be nice to do this again in Division 1. And as it's Sunday, let me say Amen. The big match in Division 1 was of course the Battle of the ex Ozeki. Takayasu vs. Teruno Fuji, both sharing the lead with Chiyono Kuni, who lost prior to this match. With the Yokozuna on leave, these two have been labelled the saviours of the tournament. Takayasu for his awesome arms and rugged chest, and Teru for his vice-like grips and pulling power. It's a shame they have to fight each other so early, said Judge Fujishima. 
But let's enjoy watching two men in fine form. He failed to mention a crucial point though. Takayasu had won eight of their nine meetings prior to this one, the last few not even close. As you can see in this footage from November, Takayasu is one of precious few, bulky enough to avoid a clamping, and strong enough to ably parry this giant. Not to mention ambidextrous when it comes to outside grips. He is uniquely comfortable against this particular opponent, was what the analyst said last time, giving Teru a tremendous psychological challenge today. Here's the result. And Takayasu made it 9 from 10. Teru's preferred stance is inside right, outside left, and Takayasu thwarts both, sending his left in very central, and his right straight for the elbow. Once that's blitzed, he lodges a brawny arm in the pit, and forces Teru into the double-armed clamp he dislikes, against huge biceps and triceps loath to yield. Teru defends with that huge left knee, which works fine against the likes of Shodai and Meisei, but Takayasu knows exactly how to dislodge it, as well as avoid the armlock throw, whirling him around with tornado-like force, then freeing his left forearm for a frontal attack. That commanding finish puts him solely in the tournament lead for the first time in his long career. What a title chance this is. My tachi eye was great, my right got in deep, and after that I could fight carefully, Takayasu said. When you're aiming for higher things, that kind of sumo gives you confidence. Now it's important to keep up this focus and intensity for tomorrow. Teru no Fuji, who's just three wins away from an Ozeki return of course, made for home without leaving a comment today, but Chairman Hakaku advised him to consider pushing in such matches given his encroachment is so good. There are as ever many other bouts I could show you, but let's save them for a high-definition marathon post-tournament. Except for this one. That's not just vintage Dai Eisho, that's Dai Eisho 2.0 the one headed for a higher level. A truly brutal assault on shoulder and throat, keeping Asanayama's left totally out of the game. I hit him good and proper, made him feel my power, then attacked well, Daesho said. When good moves come out like that in a match, you get a real boost, a mental advantage. He still needs five wins to keep rank, but after Shodai tomorrow, he'll be up against non-Sanyaku men only, and doubtless confident of results. Just some news from far lower down the chart. The rain sadly came down on Tomokaze's comeback parade today. He fell to January's Division 6 champion Atami Fuji to go 3-1 in Division 5. I can't rely on my injured knee to keep me in just yet, he said. Remember, my doctor first told me I'd be lucky to walk. And, sticking with knee problems, Hakuho underwent endoscopic surgery on Friday to deal with the chronic build-up of fluid in his right knee, among other problems. Coach Miyagino confirms he is eyeing July as the realistic comeback date. The Yokozuna Council, we understand, will meet to discuss that and, as far as their toothless structure allows, try to up the pressure. Thank you for watching today, I hope you enjoyed those extra news snippets too. And I promise you, we'll have more tomorrow.